You've just arrowed a great buck. You're stoked beyond belief. The adrenaline is running through your veins, but you need to stay focused. What you do in the next few seconds can make all the difference in the world whether you retrieve that buck and how quickly you retrieve that buck. The first thing you do is sit and wait. There's no hurry. You just made the shot. That meat is not gonna spoil for hours and hours and hours. So catch your breath. If you wanna find every deer you shoot, focus on the details. You're watching Deer and Deer Hunting TV. This is where it all begins. Best hunting day ever. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. I was born, raised, and I've lived in Wisconsin my whole life. And when it comes to September in Wisconsin, there's three things we can always count on. Badger football, Packer football, and bow hunting season. This past season for me was a little bit crazy. With all the work trips uh, throughout the country, it didn't give me much time to hunt at home. So I circled one week at the end of September, really nice weather, and we hoped we could make it happen in a short amount of time. I have to stop and do this. I always do this. Tracy, Taylor, and Emily. My good luck terms. Now that is an encounter that everybody in America hopes for. You know, we're spoiled. I get to do this a lot and I get to do it all over. But I've never forgotten my roots. That buck right there, there's 11 million whitetail hunters and I'm one of them. I was very excited that we might have just punched our tag.
After reviewing the footage, we'd see the arrow. It hits right above the flank. And that's the kind of moment that gives me a, I, I, I don't know. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Remington, America's oldest gun maker. Get armed and deadly with Easton FNJ arrows. And by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies. There is no substitute. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Redneck Blinds. In most cases, unless you actually saw the buck go down, it's a good idea to wait before you go after the deer. You don't want to jump him up and keep him moving, get his adrenaline going. You want him, if it isn't an immediately lethal shot, you need him to go lay down, calm down, and possibly expire. One of the biggest clues as to whether you should go, whether you should stay, those clues are going to be found on the arrow the first thing you need to do is retrieve that arrow. It's gonna provide those clues that might tell you the position of the shot. Um, if you see that it's uh, you know, bubbly blood or the, you know, the indications of a good heart shot or a good lung shot, you're still gonna wait for a little while, but you're probably gonna proceed and go after that deer. If there's evidence of a gut shot, those are the times when you're just gonna to have to probably get out of the woods, give that buck for dough, a time to settle down, expire, and then go back after. A gut shot is going to kill that deer. The biggest thing you have to remember, absolutely write this down and never forget, is to don't go after that deer until you've waited at minimum of six hours and better yet seven to eight. Because that's how long it takes a gut or a paunch hit deer to die. Approximately seven hours, you're gonna be able to collect that trophy. It's gonna be an agonizing seven hours, but it's the best thing you can do to find that deer at the end of the trail. Had that deer been spent standing broadside, that might have been a clean gut shot. Deer's gonna die, I know what's gonna happen, but my process is gonna be different. This process, what we wanna do is I'm gonna sneak out of the blind, I'm gonna tiptoe over there as quietly as possible and see if I can find that arrow. That's step one to blood trailing. He was right here. He was standing right here when I shot. It's only a couple drops. There's the arrow right there. Doesn't smell, and I've got blood from tip to tip. There's a good spray of blood right here. This is central Wisconsin. It's a very small property, it's 77 acres. That's not a lot of land, and we're hunting on the back end of that surrounded by many other properties ranging from five acres to 40 acres to you know there's all sorts of little properties so we had an idea where the deer went we see where he jumped the fence line so now we have to call our neighbor tell him about the situation and try to get permission to go blood trail on his land okay with you what i'll do is i'll just uh i'll sh i'll go at first light and I, I won't be in there for very long all right well i very much appreciate it Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Thompson Center, America's master gun makers. Sever broadheads, straight through it. And by Cuddyback. Cuddy Link, 16 cameras, one cell plan, $10 per month. In 
In some cases, and this is unfortunate, but it happens a lot, that deer is gonna run off onto a neighboring property. Okay, you've got two problems now. You've got a wounded deer, and you've got a wounded deer on a place where you don't have permission to go. Um, if you've got a good relationship with your neighbors, I mean, that's golden. It's usually just a phone call, and you can go in there and retrieve that deer. Even if you do have permission to go on the neighbors, I personally would always give him a call and let him know that I'm going onto that property. Now, if it's a neighbor that you're not familiar with, you still need to get on the phone. You need to convince that person that you need to go in there and retrieve that deer. You know, most times they're gonna let you go in. There are gonna be those times though where you can't. And unfortunately, deer are lost every year because you are not able to retrieve them on a land where you have no permission to hunt. You know, and that's probably a good indicator that maybe you should put a little forethought into stand placement before you hunt. You don't want to set up right next to a property where you know you're not going to be able to retrieve a deer. You might want to set up, even if it's not as good a place, on the opposite side of that property where you know you have more area to play with. So back to the blood trail. This blood trail was very difficult for the fact that the way that arrow hit the deer, the entry wound was very far back. So we're not going to get a lot of bleeding out of that entry wound. The exit wound came through the armpit on the other side. So every time that deer took a step, it was covering up the exit wound. Okay, that's the nice thing about cool autumn days is that it was cool enough last night that when we got in there, we got to back off on that deer. It's going to be a beautiful day today. It's going to be sunshine, blue skies. We're here at the crack of dawn. We're going to let the sun get up here a little bit. We're going to go in there. We're going to start at the last spot, which wasn't very far where I, from where I shot that deer. And we're going to pick it up there. Now with blood trailing, you try to stay on the blood trail. Sometimes that's not easy because if you have grass, as which we have up here, it's really hard to find it, especially after the next day. So it requires a lot of patience and meticulous planning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a grid search. This is very common. So what, basically what you do is you just do grids on that property and you space out. If you only have two guys, is what we have today. If you have three or four, that's fine. But you methodically, 20 yards apart, very, very slowly, straight east-west lines in this case, another 20 yards, east-west lines. We only have to cover 40 acres. So we're gonna do that. If we don't find it on the first pass, we're gonna stop, we're gonna backtrack, and then we're gonna crisscross. We're gonna go opposite and all the way back the other way. Those grid searches a lot of times are almost foolproof is in that you can find that deer where he's gonna be laying. So let's get to it. Hang on, blood right there. Blood right. Got him! Yes! Right there. We caught him. We caught him. Oh my God. We found our buck. This is more exciting, I think, than actually shooting a deer. It's 8.30. We got on this blood trail at uh, 6.30 this morning. This buck did not go very far. And it would be really easy, I've seen it a lot, I try to hold my tongue when I'm on other camps, is to give up on a blood trail. As long as you have blood, you stay on the blood. We stayed on the blood, let me tell you, this was really thick in here. I mean, this is, it's Japanese barberry, it's raspberry brush, it's prickly ash. My, look at, these are brand new pants. These are brand new Numa pants and they're ripped to shreds. I don't care, I'll get another pair. We've got our buck. And you know what you get for this? Woo! <laughs> yes! Meticulous notes, meticulous observations, and never give up when you're on a blood trail. 
This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Matthews. Are you thinking of getting into deer hunting this year? I know a lot of people are. And there's a lot of areas where you have to use a shotgun. Here are three things you should consider if you're looking at a shotgun for deer hunting. Number one, how much deer hunting are you going to do? Are you a bird hunter, a rabbit hunter, you do a lot of different things and you might deer hunt for a week? Then I would suggest, you know, a gun like this. This is what I started with. This is Remington 870. The nice thing about the 870, it's solid. This is a 12 gauge. This has a bead on the front. The thing you need to consider is you have to run a lot of ammo through here to get used to that gun. No different than your pellet gun or your 22. Learn the gun and you'll be able to shoot deer with this no problem. Second thing you need to consider, what types of ammo should you use? There's a lot of shotgun ammo out there and some of it's pretty expensive. So what you wanna do is read up on it. One thing I'm gonna tell you, write this name down, Dave Henderson from Endicott, New York, the be all end all shotgun expert in America. Find his book, Shotgunning for Deer. It's gonna teach you more than I can teach you in this video, but you're gonna learn all about slugs. A gun like this, remember a foster style slug. You don't need nothing fancy. One thing that a lot of people might want you to believe is that rifling in a shotgun barrel is gonna help it spin. That doesn't, that's not true, that's a myth. Rifling in a shotgun barrel does not make that slug spin when it comes out of there. A foster style slug, which shoots really good out of a gun like this, basically it's the design of that slug, the weight of that slug, and the retention of that slug, which making that slug accurate downrange. With some practice and the right ammo through a gun like this, you'd be well off shooting deer at 50 yards and less during deer season. Now the third thing you wanna keep in mind is if you're gonna do a lot of deer hunting and that's all you wanna do, then I would recommend a dedicated gun just for deer hunting. Right here we have a Remington 870. Same gun as this. This is a 12, however, and this is a 20 gauge. This one looks different. It's got a nice black stock. It's, it's kinda of cool, it's tricked out. You can get a dedicated gun like this for just a little bit more, add some nice optics on it, and make sure that it's a dedicated shotgun scope. You put a rifle scope on there, you will ruin it immediately. Shotguns punish scopes a lot more than center fire rifles. Okay, here's a final tip for you. When it comes to shooting a slug gun, it's different than a center fire rifle. With a center fire rifle, what you see is you see guys sometimes not even holding the forearm. What they do is they have their hand back here. However, they're resting, they might have that on a rest right up there. And they're just coming up right here and slowly squeezing the trigger. You know, ideally see that little puff coming out of the barrel when the gun goes off, it almost surprises you. Not what you want to do with a slug gun. Slug gun is a completely different shooting form. Three points of contact and really solid contacts. Let's say I have to just shoot off of this bench. Point one, point two, point three. And I'm going to get down. I'm going to get locked in, gripping the forend. I'm pulling the gun down and in toward me. Down and in, back this way. I'm going to get that as tight as possible. I'm going to get this as tight as possible, and I'm going to just bury that thing into my shoulder so it doesn't move. This hand still stays loose because I don't want to torque it. And when I shoot, boom, that thing's going to knock me back, but it's going to, I'm going to keep steady by keeping that pressure point here. With a slug gun, a slug gun really rocks you. And that's one thing you want to keep in mind is to be more accurate, is to be solid. Keep these tips in mind when you're hunting this fall, and I think you're going to have a lot more success. Like a lot of bow hunters, I've sustained a shoulder injury that prevents me from pulling a lot of weight and shooting a lot of arrows at one practice session. That's why I take the one arrow approach. Now what I mean about a one arrow approach is that I'm not going to come out to the range and shoot 20 arrows. I might shoot six, but I'm going to try to make every shot count. Shooting a bow well is as much a mental game as it is a physical game. Now it's important to shoot your bow a lot to build up the muscles you need to draw your bow back and to develop some good muscle memory. But if you have an injury, or maybe you're an older archer, you're not gonna come out and shoot 20 arrows at a time. So with the one arrow approach, you're gonna make every shot count. And that means that I'm gonna shoot one arrow at a time, I'm gonna walk up to the target, I'm gonna think about the shot I just made, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take my next shot.
And just remember, you can practice this technique from a tree stand, from an elevated stand, from a ground blind, um, spot and stock simulation like we're doing here. All of those situations that you might encounter in the field, you can do here on the practice range. It's important to practice, but it's also important to practice smart. I need to shoot this one arrow approach because of a shoulder, but it's a good technique for all archers. It keeps your mind in the game. It gets you thinking about what you're doing rather than just mechanically shooting one arrow after another. Shoot often, shoot smart. Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. For more tips, strategies, and hunting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching Deer and Deer Hunting TV.